good morning. I wanted to show you some things as we go into chapter four that I think you'll find helpful. First of all, there's this app which is called Mahjong Chem. If you type in Mahjong Chem on Google Play or the iTunes App Store, you can get this to download to either your Google browser or to an app on your smartphone or on your iPod Touch or whatever you use. You can also just type in Mahjong Chem and go to this. Part of the reason that I have you looking at this is simply because you need to learn the elements. And this app does a great job of teaching you some basic chemistry. If you don't learn the elements, it's going to be a problem. So then it's just as simple as playing Mahjong. And if you find something, it will come through and click off. It will also show you hints if you need to. There are different types of things that you can do with this game. So this game comes in handy for the rest of the year. It's an alternative to flashcards for learning names, ions, and other things. So that's Mahjong Chem. I also wanted to talk to you about the periodic table. And the periodic table readings talk about Newland's octaves. Newlands noticed that there were patterns among the periodic table and he came up with this thesis. The eighth element started repeating and then, um, gee, we got a problem that arose. And that problem that arose pointed out that the periodic table was not simply rows of eight. And we have to think about this in terms of the Hog Hilton and the fact that when we looked at the Hog Hilton, we saw a hotel being organized in a funky sort of way. When we look at the periodic table, we start rearranging that hotel to still allow the pigs or the electrons to come in in a different way. And so Newland's idea was rooms of um that allowed for eight pigs on a floor and we can see that his thesis was a good start but not quite. We can go on to Meyer. Meyer built off of the work of Dalton, our first chemist, and if you go back to Dalton's principles you will find that Dalton saw some patterning in the way that elements combine and that gave him a clue for the organization of this hotel or this periodic table. Meyer, 1830, um, was one of the first people to really organize things and he organized it in terms of weight. So you can see these eight octaves that Newland had, but he was trying to come up with a way to make it fit. And this particular row had three things and it wasn't working. He organized the periodic table according to the weight of a mole. Meyer's system then got going in a little bit more detail and the website I'm using is called Metasynthesis. It literally has hundreds of different ways to organize our Hog Hilton which we call the periodic table. The real brilliant breakthrough came in when Mendeleev organized the periodic table. Now this doesn't look all that exciting. You can see that periodic table, instead of being organized from the bottom up like the Hog Hilton was, is really starting to be organized from side to side. And so all of these elements, hydrogen, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluoride are organized horizontally instead of vertically on today's table. M Mendeleev's vision was really the fact that he organized things by the number of protons rather than the weight. <coughs> Excuse me. Then we go onward. We start looking at periodic tables and you can see all these hundreds 
that showed up just up to 1994. And part of that was the fact that we came up with elements between 1900 and now that are different. We eventually got to the point where we have 114 elements, I believe, and people organize these in different ways. You can see diagonals. This would be the first periodic table as we go. Here's a very loop-de-loop -loop artsy periodic table. Here's one that looks like it's a spiral tube and another spiral tube. Periodic tables are a way to organize our thinking, organize the Hog Hilton in a way that makes sense to us. And while we normally use 2D periodic tables, there are actually lots of them that instead of being 2D are three-dimensional. So how could you turn this into a three-dimensional periodic table? That's a great question. 